All right, so what do I mean when I say we need to get on the same page in terms of anatomy and physiology? Well, have you ever had somebody describe where something is to you? So for example, say you lost your keys and your friend knows where it's at. So they say, hey, go to the counter on the third drawer on the right below that little pouch that you keep your markers in. That's where your key should be, right? And then you get really confused. And you're like, okay, which one is that? And then you eventually find it. But how did he describe it to you? Well, he used these things called directional terms, and they help us as either doctors, healthcare workers, kind of identify where something is on the body using these common names of words, okay? So first off, we need to have basically a, a model of how the human body is oriented. Now I've drawn, we'll say his name is Josh here, very terrible drawing of one of my best friends actually, Josh. Um, <laughs> he's not bald. Um, but anyway, he's facing forward as you can see. His palms are out and his feet are shoulder width apart facing forward. We call this something called anatomical position. Anatomical position because we're going to pretend, or not pretend, we're actually going to describe the human body based on this positioning of the body, okay? So all these directional terms are going to assume that the person is standing up straight, shoulders back, feet pointed forward, palms outward. Remember, palms are outward. That's going to be kind of interesting here in a little bit. So let's start with the first directional term, and we're going to get a little practice here real quick. The first one is going to be called superior. And the antithesis, <laughs> try that again. <laughs> the first term is going to be called superior. So superior, you can remember, is uh, as if you're feeling superior to somebody. You feel above them. Okay, so anytime we're talking about something that's this direction in the human body, we're going to say that that will be superior. Now, we also need to have a term on how we describe things lower than a certain place, and that's going to be the opposite term, inferior, which you've probably heard if you feel inferior to somebody, you feel below them, and that's the case. So anytime we move downward, we're going to talk about inferior. Now, Generally, when we use these terms, we're relating one thing, so like one part of the body, to another thing, right? Remember when I gave that example of like, oh, the, the counter that's second drawer below the top drawer, right? You're referencing it in uh, comparison to something else. So if I were to take, say, the knee and the foot, right, what could we say? Well, we could say the knee is more what than the feet, in terms of superior and inferior, we know the knee is more superior than the feet. Does that kind of make sense? So the knee is more superior than the feet. Easy, right? Now let's move on to the other four. By the way, you can actually remember SAMPS because that's going to be the first word of each of the pairs. So the next one is going to be anterior and posterior. Anterior and posterior. Now this one, it just means front versus back. So if we're talking about something that's more frontward in your body, we're going to say it is anterior. It's kind of hard to draw, but I'm going to draw kind of an arrow going this way. This is going to be anterior, whereas if you're talking about sort of towards the back side, we're going to have that be posterior. Okay. Now you may also hear the terms ventral and dorsal. Ventral means anterior, dorsal means posterior. Great. So we could say if you had the belly button, the umbilical region right here, and we were comparing it to the vertebrae in the back, we could say that the umbilical region is more anterior and the uh, vertebrae is more posterior, right? Kind of makes sense. Okay, very cool. We'll move on. Three more. We've got medial versus lateral medial versus lateral. What does that mean? Well, medial kind of sounds like the word middle, right? And medial means towards the midline and lateral means away from the midline. So pretend if I were to cut Josh right in half here, that would be his midline. Anything that is going towards that midline is going to be considered medial. Anything moving away is going to be called lateral, okay? which you've probably heard of like, if you make a lateral movement, you go outward, right? Medial, middle, very good. Now let's use another practice here. Uh, let's have the, um, uh, we'll say the uh, mouth is more what to the, we'll say ear. 
So the mouth is blank to the ear. What would you fill in in terms of medial or lateral? Pretty easy one. You guys are probably like, this is so easy, right? Well, we know that the mouth is going to be more medial to the ear, right? Medial to the ear because it's more towards the midline, whereas the ear, we could say, would be a little more lateral, right? Because the ear is more on the outside. Very good. Okay, now Josh is an elf. Brilliant. He needs a little hat. Oh, I'll get that later. Okay, moving on. Two more. We've got proximal, and then we've got distal. Now, if you think of those words, proximal, distal, if you are in uh, the proximate area or the proximity of somebody, you are really close to them. Whereas if you're at a distance, you're further away from them. So this is usually referencing an appendage like the leg or the arm. If we go further away from the torso of the body, we are going to call that distal. And if we're going closer to the torso or the attachment point, we are going to call that proximal, okay? So we could say, for example, that the carpals, the wrist bones, are more distal to the elbow, okay? The elbow would be more proximal. Make sense? Last one, we've got superficial versus deep. Superficial versus deep, okay? Now, if you think of something deep, we're going inside, right? So here's where I actually need a little cross section. So let's take, for example, a little chunk out of Josh's leg. I feel so bad I keep referencing Josh. And we're going to zoom in on that leg. Well, what would we find kind of inside that leg? Well, we know on the outside part of his leg, we see his skin, right? So I'm going to draw his skin just in black. So here's his skin right here. And we'll just draw kind of a double layer of skin. So we'll say skin. Then inwardly, right underneath the skin, you would actually find things called connective tissue. So you'd see kind of these fibers connecting the skin to underlying structures. So we'll say this is connective tissue. We'll talk about tissue here in a little bit. Connective tissue. Right below that, we would have some muscles. Uh, Josh is actually very jacked. So I'm going to draw a pretty good sized muscle here. Okay, so connective tissue connecting to those muscles. All right, muscle here. And then lastly, if you dig deep enough, obviously this is going to now be bone tissue. Okay, so his femur bone would be right there. So we'll say that is bone tissue. Very good. Now, why did I just cut Josh apart? Well, we need to know that superficial means towards the surface. Okay, so remember superficial surface. And what do you usually find there? Skin. So a lot of S's there. So the further outward you go, we are going to have it be more superficial. Now, you could probably guess if we go inward, we're going to go deep. Okay. And you kind of know that. If you know a person that's very superficial, they're very much towards the outside, right? Whereas deep, you're getting a little deeper inward. Very good. So all of these terms are very important when referencing where certain things are, especially if somebody's uh, having a symptom where they're experiencing pain, say like in this region, well, they'd say it's a little more proximal to the elbow, right? So it's an easy way to describe where something is, and it's uh, same across every single human body. Fabulous, okay. Now, one little note. I know your anatomy teachers are going to ask you this on a test. They're going to say, hey, in reference to the pinky, what is the thumb? In reference to the pinky, what is the thumb? Well, we need to know that the palms are out in anatomical position. So I'm going to say palms are out. What does that mean? Well, it means that your thumbs, I drew them very big, very fat are always going to be more lateral, okay? So I want you to remember that thumbs will be lateral, okay, in anatomical position, whereas your pinkies will actually be more medial. So remember that that's going to be on there is pinky, i.e. or y, I don't know. Pinky is going to be more medial. So you're welcome. That will be a test question. And if you did get that test question, comment below and uh, tell me that I'm actually right. Okay, fantastic. Now, we've got that covered. Now let's go into planes a little bit. I'm going to give you the three names of the planes. And no, I'm not talking about the things that fly. I'm talking about ways that we can cut the body apart to kind of understand it. So I'm going to write the three down. And then I'm going to give you some pictures right about here because I can't draw them very well. The first one's going to be something called the frontal plane or also the coronal plane. Okay, so there's a frontal coronal plane. 
there's going to be something called a sagittal plane, and then there's going to be something called a transverse plane, also called the horizontal plane sometimes. This can also be called a cross section, just depends. And then we can also have an oblique plane, but those are less common. Okay, so what are we doing here? Well, the frontal plane or coronal plane is going to separate the body out from front to back. Okay, so I'm going to draw a picture of the plane here uh, from the internet. So you see how we're kind of drawing that plane through the person's body, separating out front to back. Now, if we were to do that, we can actually peek inside the body as if we're kind of opening the book and looking at the person's insides from the front or the back. Okay, so I'm going to show a picture of that right here. So you see kind of what a frontal plane would show you inside of the body. Obviously, these are hypothetical planes. It's not like we're actually cutting people open. Unless you do autopsies for a living, then you might be cutting people open. So why is it called a coronal plane? Well, the reason for that is because corona means crown. And when you crown somebody, you kind of crown them like this, right? Crowning them like this, separating out front to back. That is frontal or coronal. Next one will be sagittal, okay? Sagittal, I always remember, is the split down the middle, usually, although it can also be to the side. So we're going to be separating left from right in the sagittal plane. So I'm going to pull up one right here. Okay, sagittal plane, you see how it's running right down the midline. It's as if uh, we're cutting the person from left to right, or sorry, straight up and down, uh, separating out left and right sides. Now, in this case, we're going to view the person's plane from either the left or right side. So I'm going to pull a picture of up right now. So you can see we're looking from the side inside of the body. It gives you a different picture of the internal organs of the body. Fascinating. Okay, third one will be the transverse or horizontal. This is when we're going to separate out basically top from bottom half. Top from bottom half. So, separating out top from bottom kind of be like this, okay? And we can see that on this picture here. Now, in this picture, we can see, obviously, we can look at the body from top or bottom, usually from the top. Okay, so our top facing view downward. And again, we're looking inside of the body at different parts, different levels of the body. So if you've ever seen like a brain scan before in a show, like an MRI, they usually scan from top to bottom and you see all, all the different shapes of the brain as it moves through. Really cool picture. All right, last one is oblique. I'm not gonna pull a picture of that up, but that's when you're basically taking any part of the body and you're actually going to separate it out at an angle, kind of like at a line. And it's gonna give you kind of an odd look at what that uh, internal organ looks like. So less common, but you might need to be aware of it. Brilliant, okay, so now that we kinda know how to describe different parts of the body directionally, we need to talk about all these different structures that consist of the body. Because I talked about the skin, some tissue, some muscle, some bone, but what I want you to know is that if we were to zoom in fully on the body, any part of the body, we'll just say like, I don't know, right here, if I were to zoom in on the most functional part of the body, we would see something that looks like this. Okay, it might not look exactly like this, but you probably know what this is, right? This is your cells, okay? The cell is the functional unit of your body, okay? In fact, I usually, as a teacher, spend about two to three weeks just on cells because they are the functional unit of the body. Okay, why is that important? Well, it means if you are doing something, it's because your cells are doing something. Okay, so if you're moving, right, it's because your muscle cells are contracting because your neuron cells are sending signals to your muscles to tell them to contract. So if you're doing something, it's because your cells are doing something. However, if we put cells together, we make something called a tissue, which I mentioned. And if we have a lot of different tissues mixed together, we could have something called an organ. But furthermore, if we were to cut the cell up even more, we would find that, hey, this little part of the cell right here is actually made of a fat. This is the membrane of the cell, right? We'd also see a lot of dots inside the cell, and we know that that's going to be made of protein. You may have heard of these things as macromolecules. And then we know that inside your cell, the majority of it is filled with a fluid that you likely have heard of before called water, right? 
So how are we going to understand everything? Well, we need to know what the heck these are, which are atoms forming molecules, molecules forming macromolecules, and then macromolecules forming cells, tissues, and organs, levels of organization. So we're gonna briefly go through that and discuss how in ANP1, we're going to learn about these things, but then also apply it to all the different organ systems.